Hey Pan Dudes, Peter Von Panda here. I don't know if you like drinking whiskey, but uh, I like to take a little sip every once in a while. Here are a few that I that I have. Um, and I just ordered a new bottle of whiskey that I'm excited to try out. It is from Lead Slingers. Lead Slingers Bourbon. A Scissor Tail Distillery is a product of Moore, Oklahoma. So um, you may be familiar with Lead Slingers. Uh, this is not a super high-end whiskey. I do like the bottle. It's pretty cool. It is rectangular and it has kind of this um, brown paper bag type of label on it. It actually looks pretty cool. If you're looking for interesting bottles to add to your whiskey collection, I would certainly check it out. But Lead Slingers uh, is a uh, Second Amendment veteran owned, uh, relatively new company here. The, the whiskey hasn't been around a while. In fact, getting this is really tough. Uh, it, I want to say this retails for about $25. So in terms of whiskey, uh, that you would expect. Um, it should be a drinkable whiskey, but I guess my uh, assumption would be that I'd use it more for mixers or something like that as opposed to going to the Nikka or the Yamazaki or the Biggie or something like that, which is going to be something you're going to drink straight or on the rocks. Um, but this was going to be kind of a more consumable whiskey. Anyway, haven't tried it yet. As you can see, the plastic uh, cap here is still uh, heat sealed and on, and on there. But um, supposedly it should be pretty good. Obviously no age statement because the company's only been around for a couple years. So the whiskey isn't going to be much older than that. Uh, but what I wanted to do is take this opportunity to bring you a couple of ideas. So uh, because I'm going to own this whiskey and because it would be interesting to taste it, I wanted to try a couple things to age whiskey. As you know, aging whiskey in oak barrels is the way to add all of the flavor, to take the color from the colorless alcohol, uh, that gets distilled in the process to this really dark, you know, golden brown tan color, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that happens usually in charred oak barrels. And the longer you leave whiskey in contact with the charred oak, the better it becomes in general. And so uh, whiskeys with age statements, like uh, let's say here, uh, the Yamazaki age 12 years, has been kind of a thing of importance to say, wow, look how long it's been in contact with this wood and it's going to be really great, buttery, smooth, etc., etc. Younger whiskeys don't have that opportunity and companies that start up in whiskey making don't have that opportunity to really age something for a long time because it can take a really long time to, um, to generate any revenue. So what you can do is you can put on one in smaller barrels. And that's what I was thinking about is getting a one liter barrel, pouring this in there. And uh, that speeds up the aging because you've got less whiskey in contact with more wood, right? The the whiskey to wood ratio is, is, uh, is, is lower. So it will kind of age faster. So aging almost isn't the right word. Don't get me started on that. I, I actually don't mind the, uh, you know, bourbons and whatnot dropping off age statements but what you want is a lot of wood to your whiskey so as opposed to buying a really small barrel which you can do and a lot of startup distilleries are doing that and kind of starting to age in small barrels i bought a couple of kind of products you can use at home this one is the barrel aged in a bottle uh spiral oak infusion and um what this is as you can see it's actually made to go in any uh, three quarter liter bottle. So it's a spiral, a little wood spiral. It's like a dowel and it's supposed to fit into the neck of these bottles. And from what I can tell, it certainly looks like a will. It's, it's actually smaller than I would have thought. So it's American Oak char number three. So it's got a pretty heavy char on it. And what you would do is you would just drop this in your bottle and your bottle would act as the oak barrel in this case, but the oak obviously and the char would come from this little spiral dowel that is pretty clever in that not only is it uh, spiraled to give it more surface area, but it's round and then the edges are charred. So as you can see here, it's coming off of my hand, right? A little charcoal, so definitely charred, heavy char on the outside, but you can see kind of that toasted inner uh, inner wood. So what I actually think is they take an oak dowel, they char the whole thing, uh, kind of run it through a fire, and then they then they cut out the spiral. It gives it a lot of surface area, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can just drop this in there and then hopefully, if you're using just kind of a clear grain whiskey, it's going to be easier to see these results. But um, we're going to do a little test and control here. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to this for just a second and we're going to apply some of this to the lead slingers and give it some time. 
The other thing I bought was this bag of medium toasted oak chips. So the nice thing about this is you can add as many or as little as you want. This bag is you know, pretty large um, and it's probably big enough for a whole jug of um, unaged whiskey. But I'm not going to use all of this, but what it allows me to do is, as we just discussed, um, add a lot of surface area of oak to the whiskey to kind of age it quickly. Now, this is a medium toast, and you can see that there's no distinct char on it. And the reason I got this is because the char, from what I understand, adds a lot of that smokiness flavor, kind of the darker color. But the, the oak itself, as the... Uh, liquor goes in and out of the oak kind of adds the richness the smoothness the butteriness and so what I wanted is to run two tests one with um, this spiral to give it a little more char and see what that does to the whiskey over time and then over the same time period add this medium toast to see if one gets a little smokier more robust maybe a little stronger and one gets a little more creamy and more drinkable um, and see what they're like, and then actually take a little sample from both and combine them and see if, uh, you know, the, 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 the best product is maybe a, a medium in between. We'll also save some of the original Lead Slinger's whiskey to taste that, to taste the untainted, um, the, the product that they put right in the stores and, and make available to the consumers. Compare that against the toasted oak, the charred oak uh, spiral, and then also the combination of these two. So we'll actually have four whiskey samples all at the end of this little project and uh, we'll see which one is the best and how it works. So let's go ahead and start working on putting these suckers together. So I have a little, I have these little glass pint jars and I have three of them because that's what we're going to use. We're going to make, we're going to kind of have three groups right now and I am going to go ahead and open up two of these right off the bat. And then I'm going to open up the lead slingers. And, and I'll tell you what, uh, as I'm doing this, lead slingers is hard to find, man. These guys, Matt Best and his boys, are popular dudes. Um, and coming up with this, I actually had to prepay to get this. And it took kind of forever for someone to actually be able to hunt me down a bottle. Because even the retailers that they say have them are often out of stock on them. So good on those guys for... Uh, making a product and really marketing the hell out of it. Uh, they seem like cool dudes um, and uh, soldiers, so thanks for your service. Uh, all right, so it looks like there is a cork stopper in here. Once you get the plastic off, it just kind of pulls out. Uh, I might say that's plastic, plastic all the way around. So uh, the first thing about it is you got a good whiff of it. You know, it doesn't smell bad. It smells pretty good, and, and for <laughs> young whiskey, it, it actually smells a lot like uh, Johnny Walker Red. So anyway, we're not gonna, you know, I could get into complaints about whiskey reviews. They're all vanilla, pepper. There's always a hint of citrus, some some dates, and some uh, some raisin and smoke, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I always find uh, whiskey reviews uh, kind of funny because they all are like the exact same and I don't know how from the description you're supposed to uh, tell what's different. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour, I'm gonna try to get maybe just a little under half of the bottle into this, 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 uh, this pint jar. Let's see if I can get you a little better angle here. Okay. Oops, just a little. I'm gonna put a little, kind of the, the bulk of the remainder in here. And we have a little bit left in the bottle itself. Um, I actually don't want too much. I'm gonna top this one off a little bit. So really all I want is a taste of what the Lead Slingers taste like once we get all said and done with this. Um, just so that if you are a complainer and you're saying, well, Pete, now you're gonna have just a little bit of whiskey in this bottle and a ton of air. I do have a nitrogen and carbon dioxide spray that I am going to spray into the bottle here just to make sure we remove the oxygen to kind of keep this in its as much of its preserved state as possible. The other cool thing is I just realized that back label, you can see it there, is printed on the inside and it's American flag as well. The front label doesn't have anything printed on the back side, but uh, that back label does. So cool, man, that's kind of, that's kind of I, I kind of dig that. All right, so now, first of all, we're gonna take this char spiral and I'm just gonna drop it into this first one. 
Looks like apple juice. I hope no kids uh, come here and pop this sucker open. And I don't have to label these because it's pretty obvious what has what in there. So let's seal this one up. Then I'm going to take my medium toasted oak chips. You can get these online pretty much anywhere. I'm going to put a link to all the stuff that I've that I got here and to show you um, so that you can kind of find out. You know, the interesting thing about this, these oak chips, is they look a lot like, you know, the wood chips that you find on playground or in flower beds outside of a house. You know, they don't, <laughs> um, I wouldn't assume that you would add these to things that you're gonna eat or drink, but this is what they're kind of like. They're, you know, they're kind of angle cut, so you're gonna get a lot of surface area. And from a smell standpoint, You know, they smell kind of like that those wood chips that you put in flower beds. I don't know. Um, I'm not getting like a smoky char flavor, but then again, they're just supposed to be toasted. So my assumption is, I don't know how you do that, if it's an open flame or just high heat. But if you have the right white American oak, presumably you could maybe chip it yourself and put it in a toaster oven or something or in your oven or I don't know. It's possible. So anyway, um, my hands are clean, so I'm going to not waste these chips. But... I'm going to kind of go a little heavy on this one, uh, and I'm going to drop a bunch in there. As you, as I told you, surface area, the more surface area, the faster it's going to age. So in terms of overall wood in surface area, this one's going to have a lot more than, than this one, but it's not going to have that char. So um, I'm not going to go any more than that. I, you know what? I, I mean, why, why not? Why not? You're going to go big or go home, right? Um, if this stuff ages stuff quickly, then why not? Uh, it's going to age it super fast. I've got a lot of chips in there. Um, I've heard experts say that there's no harm in shaking stuff up if you want to. It's not doesn't really do a whole lot, but um, it uh, you can if you feel better about it. I'm not going to agitate that charred one too much, just because it's going to knock off a lot of the uh, the charcoal into it. So anyway, here we go. So now we're going to start the clock. Um, I don't know how long I will let this sit. I'm certainly going to want some visual change first, and then we'll come back and we will try the unadulterated lead slingers, the lead slingers with the spiral, lead slingers with the toasted chips, and then a little bit of a mixture of that to see if um, it's even better that way. And I'll be honest, I am actually stunned. First of all, it's only been five days since we put these in here, and you can see that the color difference is massive. And again, part of this is because our surface to volume is very high. So uh, between the aging and the oaking, uh, we're getting a lot of effect in a fairly short amount of time. You know, when you put this in a large uh, barrel, the, the, or the surface to volume ratio is low, so it takes a long time to kind of get the color and the flavors um, yeah, into the whiskeys kind of to have that to have that wood affect it. But here we've done it very, very fast. There's two things that I'm going to mention here that I am absolutely surprised on. One, how quickly the colors have changed. And two, um, which ones changed the color. So here's that oak spiral. This has a charred edge on it. And I kind of would have expected this to be darker. Um, and kind of have give them kind of a more traditional whiskey flavor but it's clearly you know more you know older whiskey color but the the uh oak chips here which is a medium toast and i wouldn't have expected so much color change now you might remember just a few minutes ago i showed you in the uh in my other video that i added a ton of chips in here kind of really put a lot of surface area man this got dark um it's going to be lighter once i get the chips out because there's a ton of them in there but this was is really really dark i may have ruined a, a perfectly good bottle of lead slingers whiskey in this experiment but you know what that's part of living and learning now the second thing i will tell you is i've tasted these already um uh, you know kind of three days into it i gave it a little taste to, and and i was surprised at how different they were but kind of what i preferred now i'm going to use a coffee filter and strain these out and get rid of the uh, the wood in them and then we'll give them a little bit of a taste test and see what we have done all right guys um so what i've done here is i've taken the the untouched lead slingers here this one was the charred spiral again this one was the medium toasted oak chips and then this one is a combination of all three in equal portions uh, again you can tell really the, the, these are all the same amount of whiskey in each of these 
bottles or glasses and you can see lighter darker really dark almost a cherry color and then you know a combination of them so kind of something in the middle now i've tasted all these and i'm going to tell you i'm not going to get into the whole diatribe of whiskey flavors but what i can tell you is this whiskey the lead slingers whiskey is probably right on par as i as i kind of initially suspected with a johnny walker red label um it kind of has a very similar smell and taste you can actually drink it uh, it doesn't have to be a mixing whiskey so this is certainly something you could you could um you know just drink straight or on the rocks etc etc it's not bad it's strong and has a bit of a bite now after i put the charred oak spiral on this one and aged it for a little less than a week i was surprised at how much color uh, um has has been added to it and how much the the the, the taste has changed and in fact uh, one of the things that i can tell you is that it is definitely better with the charred oak spiral no doubt in my mind um, but it still has a pretty good bite it's still it, it has kind of a kind of a, a sharp punch you know what you'd expect um, so it's it's smoother it's better it's richer no doubt uh, but what I was actually surprised with is um, the large amount of medium toasted oak chips that I threw in this one I, I really I really packed this one chock full of them it obviously it had a, a, a really dramatic effect on the color but this one is really quite good so just adding these medium toasted cho oak chips, I, and I would love to test the heavy uh, toast and even honestly the, the light toast because um, you know this really, these really made this a lot smoother. It really kind of took down the, the punch that you get from the, the heavy alcohol um, the, uh, that you get on kind of a whiskey uh, drink. The, the, it, it really is a whole, just kind of a much more pleasant experience a lot more flavor um, a lot smoother butterier uh, you know creamier taste to it um, I was really surprised and then this one which was the combination of these three is kind of right in the middle it actually uh, was not a lot different than this one in my opinion because you've got these two kind of uh, balancing each other out to get you here so uh, you know if I were to in the future I'm gonna really default to these but if all you have are these uh, these barrel aged in a bottle you know spirals you can certainly drop these into the to the bottle and they certainly do actually amazing amazing things but if you can if you can find your own container and use the the oak chips i'm really really impressed with these uh, these are certainly going to be my go-to and you can add a bunch of them and kind of you can oak and age as much or as little as you want because you can really control the amount here. So really impressed with this. I'll put links up so that, you know, depending on what you have access to, if you have to use the original bottle, then uh, the spiral is a great way to go. But either way, you know, really dramatic effect, much more than I was expecting. And you can take a whiskey, presumably, or even the white dog, uh, white whiskey, and, uh, you know, kind of do amazing things with it. So Peter Von Panda for the Lead Slingers bourbon whiskey and different oaking methods that you can do at home. Out.